this is the cover crop. It was put in probably two weeks ago. Now we're early October and we did get a lot of rain oh, about a week ago going from very dry. I don't know if I've ever seen it this dry in the fall to getting three and a half inches over the course of four to five days, which that was the scary part. It was gonna wash everything up or it was gonna come come kind of in spurts. We had a couple good downpours, but not, not a lot at a time. So it worked out pretty good. And this stuff was just barely germinated. Some places probably wasn't even germinated because of the lack of moisture. So there's oats in here, half oats, half rye, thinking we were set at some place around between 80 and 100 pounds. Now it's kind of hard to tell. We don't do enough of it to really get it calibrated just right. So the rye seed is a lot smaller than the oat seed. And the oat seed this past several years is smaller than it normally was in, in, at times. So then the rate will be more. And I'm just trying to see the difference here uh, from the rye to the oats. And sometimes the rye will have like a little, a little more of a darker stem. So the oats will grow very well late in the fall until it really freezes hard. And then of course the rye, you know, gets established well and then it'll take off in the spring. And this is already quite far ready considering the time of the year. And then you can kind of see the difference. So we did refill the silo here and took a couple loads off of this field after the rye was put in. There's a few guys still chopping corn silage yet, but some of that corn was pretty green. And I don't know, we're really going to have to start seriously looking at this picking the dry grain. Um, one thing I've noticed is our, is our tips, all our corn is all filled up it's really good. This stuff should yield pretty good considering. Well, last year it was back a little ways on a lot of them. Maybe that one's back a little bit. But that one's filled out. See, so most of them are filled out pretty good. This is a, this is a 97 day rank. And then I do a 94 day in the hills or the fields that I'd like to rotate back into hay. Typically there's possibly more shade with the north sides and stuff that we don't. The bottoms I usually get more sun, heavier soils. So that's how we've been doing it. And I did run this electric fence so I could graze this waterway out when it was really dry. And then I got a two acre patch here, kind of a triangle. A lot of grass, so we didn't get very good weed control because of the uh, drought and uh, your herbicides don't get activated without rain. Ideal would be get a half inch of rain after you put on your herbicides. It incorporates it in to the surface where the seeds, it really prevents germination of weeds in your corn. That's really what, that's how it works. So, but I'm sure that's all wore off already and done and gone and a lot of grass, especially on that side of the field. So they decided the moldboard plow. We've been moldboard plowing our our rye under the last couple years because it got so out of hand in the spring, which I like the idea. Now, Aaron could put up a link to the to the plowing video we had a couple years ago. I do explain all my beliefs about plowing, moldboard plowing especially. I do like it to cover up all that trash and being that this field has so much grasses in it and stuff, I just thought, well, I haven't moldboard plowed this one in probably 20 years. Chisel plowed, you know, disc and kind of some vertical tillage stuff. But So this is a five bottom, 550 international. I think the 450 would be considered a four bottom or, or the 540. I, I'm not sure how they do that, but it, all it is is the beam is shorter. But anyway, I bought this plow for 200 bucks off an auction back in, uh, oh, I want to think like 86 or 87. And it's got a side hill hitch. You know, so the cylinder can, and that's more for, and I'll illustrate that later on. So you can, you know, you always want to push your soils uphill. Now, what I wanted to do, and I want you guys to help me with this. Some of you guys might know, uh, I checked into a reversible plow, like something new, because you can't seem to find, even like a rollover plow, you can't find nothing around here. And I did find one at one auction and there was some pieces missing. It was a very old plow and I, it went for some pretty good money considering what it was. But so I've been pricing, I priced a new one a year and a half ago, a reversible John Deere in our area they had to offer, but of course we had to order it in, of course. I think it would have only been a four bottom, which is about what I'd be satisfied with. And um, 
I'm not sure how those work considering um, the rollover plows. Now we got these hills and I know they're very heavy, them rollover plows. So uh, you get in a hillside or, and, or something like that, you're carrying a lot of weight. The 1066 matches great up with this plow. Um, I usually use the 7510 because it's a nice, convenient, air-conditioned tractor. But the issue I found with the 7510 is the space between here and here is wider. And then on the 7510, there's some brackets down in here on both sides. And I believe on the one side, I had to take that off so that I can narrow it enough to fit this plow. It works, I mean. It wasn't that it couldn't work. It's just that you gotta do a little wrenching to get it to correlate with your plow. This tractor's my original for this plow, I, I believe. So anyway, so what I'm doing is plowing it all one way. I'm, all, I'm plowing it away from the creek. And typically we always wanna plow your soils uphill if you can. You're not digging yourself a hole over years and years of doing this. So I may not plow this again for a bunch of years again, but uh, Guys, let me know what you guys uh, find out or what you know about those um, those rollover plows versus uh, reversible plows and how they work in trash and different environments that way. We got heavy soils here, of course, so typically I won't move wood plow unless we got a lot of trash to bury. I do some chisel plowing um, and to warm the soils and to get a lot of my manures dug in. So here we go. 1066 black stripe. I know we got a lot of good comments about this tractor. It's it's clumsy, and I want to take this cab off in the worst way. Get a canopy on there. Get some fenders on there. I'm having trouble finding the steps and fender stuff and that. I think there's places a person could maybe. I did make some phone calls and where I thought they had stuff and then they didn't. But anyway, we're gonna. I'd like really like to get this thing cabless. I think we'd like it a lot more. But I'm gonna get started here and then. I'll explain a couple things as we get going. Now here on the on our control for it, there's this finger nut here that controls my depth. So when I put this lever to that to bump this, that's where I want it to stop as far as um, my depth. Ideal plowing condition. 
get some of that soil out. Very heavy, rich soil. And, and what's in here, there's some peat muck. And those of you that ain't familiar with peat muck, I grew up on a farm with a lot of this on it. It's, it's usually in the bottoms. What happens is where the the loam soil, which would be more more this more brownish, not quite as dark stuff, ends up washing over the top of it. And peat muck is pretty much roots from all the plant growth that was above it for years and years, and it's very comparable to like a compost pile but it's so far down it can't decay there's not oxygen there's not enough bacteria down there to make it decay it's like a huge sponge for water and then underneath peat muck at least in this area is i don't know they probably got a special name for it but it's blue clay it's a really hard clay that the water can't filter down through so this peat muck which i'm just skimming a little bit right here in the center of this wet field let's see a little bit of it here too so I must just get a little deeper than I was the last time I did this. There's a little bit of it. But anyway, that it's like a sponge that holds on to all that water. And that's why these wet spots, when they get wet, they just stay wet. But the advantage is when you get a year like we've had, where it gets super dry, that moisture is there for... And, it, and this stuff feels damp. It's not wet here, but there's, there's moisture here. You could get germination with soil like this. So anyway, and then you got all them roots and stuff. So now when we do work some of that up, it does rot. It does start to break down, so. And we do put some manures in here too, you know, like gutter manures. But I usually manure these bottoms over winter. I'm falling kind of deep. I've probably got eight inches there. Because it's kind of like endless, this topsoil down in here. And it's good to get this turned over for a change. So this is what they call the dead field. And that's the thing with moldboard plowing. You're pretty much, you're pushing everything in the field over Let's say, so this this from here to here is 16 inches. That would be a 16 inch, uh, a 5 16s they call it. And there's 5 18s, there's 20s, and then some of those plows they got adjustments so you can choose the width. Uh, I mean, in the sand you could probably grab a lot more. And then a lot of the real old plows are 14s. So they would only take 14, and each, each mold board would only take 14. And that would be your mold board, so. And then you got your your plowshares. You can this is these are all replaceable parts, and, and along with your coulters, which cut the grass. So then you don't get so much of this. Otherwise, you could plug. And if you didn't have much grass in your fields or debris, you, you could probably get by. I've seen guys plowing it out those because they broke off or <laughs> or out, and they just they're expensive to replace. So anyway, and then they swivel a little bit, so they're supposed to line up with the with the edge of this. And you can see this plow has got some wear already in a few spots. Like this one here, there's actually no point left anymore. He's turning right off. And we don't really have any rocks. And then here you got like a hardened edge or end. I remember all our farm stores when I was a kid would sell these. Now it's almost a special order. They're kind of a universal design there with a lot of them. You got this part on the back too. And there's terms for all this stuff. I think there's four different pieces there, along with your coulter, that's five for each bottom. Anyway, I could explain this stuff all day long. Probably doesn't really matter that much to most of us, but anyway, we're going to get plowing here.
see the difference between that and your your heavy looms. Get some earthworms in there, so it's always a good sign.
so we got left is the end of this field which I don't know, two or three passes here 